PJ, good afternoon. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, we spend, spend a lot of time talking to each other these days, may I add? <laughs> yes, we do, don't we? Is, uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know, really. Uh, you're in for a shock, by the way, because I've got about six questions from London South East, uh, bulletin board for you before we start. Oh, right. Well, fire away. Let's, let's get straight on. Right. So, obviously, I'm just reading these out. Uh, these are genuine questions, and obviously, you don't know anything about them. Right. Question number one. Metal Tiger has thus far relied on joint ventures for its project division. With the imminent appointment of a technical advisor on the board, the company has the opportunity to reinforce its corporate knowledge of te technical mining operations. Is there any appetite or ambition for Metal Tiger to launch a solo mining project in the near future? Bracket, one to three years. Best one. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Now, that's actually quite straightforward to answer. And, and the answer is yes. Uh, but the reality is that at the moment we are uh, an investing company on AIM, which means that we are restricted in terms of what we, uh, we can do. We can't at the moment operate our own projects. We have to uh, invest in uh, other companies uh, that are effectively operating uh, on our behalf, as it were. Uh, so, uh, or in a sense, they're operating independently. They're doing the work on the ground. They're handling the work. They're managing the work. They're, in many cases, planning the work. Now, we can have some influence in terms of what goes on because they're spending our money effectively. Yeah. So we do have a degree of influence, but we can't actually manage the operations ourselves. Now, there is a way to change that. And, uh, and that is very simply to change from an investing company to an operating company. Uh, that requires uh, shareholder approval and that is something that we are considering very carefully because it would be uh, quite useful to be able to have more direct uh, operational uh, control of various things within uh, our overall portfolio as it grows and develops. Uh, so the answer is yes, we potentially would like to operate our own project. At the moment we can't do it. Uh, but should we get to the point where we think it's an absolute no-brainer, we must proceed with it, then we have to change the status of the company from investing to operating. Now, that actually has some subsidiary benefits because when you're an investing company, the uh, general market ethos uh, sometimes is to try and value you against your net assets, which in our case is an absurdity because we're built, investing into very large-scale projects that can have tremendous value. Uh, in a, from a commercial perspective, but in terms of a balance sheet value, they tend to be based on what you've spent on them to date, uh, if you capitalise the spend to date. So, uh, if we convert it into operating status, one might expect the market to change its valuation metric, and that can have a really positive impact on your market capitalisation and share price. So, there's lots of reasons to consider it, and believe you me, we are at the moment. Right. <clears throat> Question number two. Obviously, like I said, these have been put from shareholders. Yes. You promised regular news flow from Botswana. Not just you, but MOD too. Since then, it's largely been excused as to why you haven't delivered on this expectation. When will the regular news flow commence? And what do you mean by the word regular? A good answer of these questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you have to be careful with regular because regular could be once a year. It could be once every 10 years. What you want is news uh, that's frequent uh, and that gives people a proper understanding as to where you are uh, at any point in time. Uh, and so that they see the assay data from the, uh, the rigs that are operating on the ground, three rigs, coming out on a regular basis. Uh, being, uh, you know, probably every every uh, couple of weeks or every few weeks, uh, potentially more depending on the intensity of the uh, of the assay data flowing through the system and the importance of breaking it down into sensible, digestible chunks. Uh, we we did promise that there would be more. Uh, regular news or a, a better flow of news and I have to be honest it, it hasn't happened now we are to a certain extent reliant upon our partners uh, to provide the news flow to us so obviously we've been campaigning on behalf of our shareholders very very strongly recently uh, to make sure that 
uh, the news flow does start to improve. And I'm, I'm sorry that it, it hasn't thus far, but we're doing everything that we should be doing to make sure this does happen. And I can promise people that the discussions in the background uh, and what we're actually looking at with the Botswana project is hugely positive. It hasn't changed in the slightest. It's just that, unfortunately, unless you communicate your message to market, uh, and unless you uh, avoid hiding your light under a bushel, to use the biblical phrase, then uh, people don't fully appreciate that things are going well. But they are going well. Uh, we're getting huge amounts of local uh, governmental support. The T3 uh, uh, information to date is superb. Uh, we're moving ahead with everything as, as we promised. We just need to get this market communications uh, uh, issue resolved and start to flow the information out to market. Now, people are pegging the Metal Tiger value to a certain extent to the uh, MOD resources uh, share price and, and its movements. And of course, that's understandable, but not entirely uh, the correct thing to do because we've got uh, uh, increasing interest in Spain. We've got the Thai developments that are happening. Uh, we've got a, a much more diverse business with lots of things that can add tremendous value. But at the moment, we have to recognize that people are closely monitoring MOD. The Botswana project is very significant, and we have to get that flow of news correct. So we're working on it. No excuses. We've got to get better. Uh, that's both MOD resources and, as a result, Metal Tiger have got to improve the news flow. That leads me on to the next question. Oh, right. When will the Botswana Q&A promise be available? Ah, now that's, that's a great question. We, we opened up uh, the, uh, to, to questions on Botswana. We were inundated with lots of questions on Botswana, many of which crossed over, uh, many of which were in a form that we couldn't really uh, utilize that effectively. So what we've done is a little bit of uh, reordering of the questions. We've uh, eliminated any duplication. We passed it round various uh, experts and we will get that out as soon as we can. Uh, that exercise we think is really valuable because it helps people to uh, talk about their concerns, their issues and so on, many of which, uh, if not all, we can uh, answer quite uh, simply really. Uh, there have been a few changes in terms of the Australian exchanges, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, reporting uh, controls and restrictions that have made it a little bit difficult to keep a consistent news flow out to market. But we need to explain that, and that's what the Q&A will hopefully do, along with further announcements from MOD that Metal Tiger will replicate or will uh, announce itself to the UK market in due course. Great stuff. There's only three to go. <laughs> it says... Not only what has recently happened in Thailand's re the Chattery mine, if a deal is struck with the Thai mine owners, why are you confident of being able to get all permits required to restart the mine and continue exploration? Uh, all payments in the sense of... It just said, uh, just to reiterate the question, knowing what has recently happened in Thailand re the Chattery mine, if a deal is struck with the Thai mine owners, why are you confident of being able to get all permits required to restart the mine and continue exploration? So how do you know you're going to take this asset forward even if you get the mine? I think that's the upshot of it. Oh, OK. Well, the Kingsgate situation with, uh, with the Chattery Gold Mine is, is, a, is a different uh, uh, kettle of fish, to use the, uh, the British phrase, altogether. It, it's, it's a gold situation, and our focus with our... Uh, with, with the two mines northwest of Bangkok is silver lead zinc. Completely different method of processing, uh, mainly using benign chemicals. Uh, it's in a completely different area. Uh, we've got a, a lots and lots of support across uh, the, the various uh, areas that we need to have support. Uh, we, we've had no pushback, no problems, no difficulties. We're dealing with very commercial, very capable vendors of the project who are going to continue to work with us as we move forward. Uh, the, uh, it, it's, it's a completely different proposition. Uh, you have to understand the local issues to, uh, to fully appreciate the situation that's happening with, uh, uh, with, with the Chantry Goldmine and uh, 
everything around that. And I, I've got to be sensible and prudent and sensitive in what I say about this, but you have to understand the local issues. From our own business perspective, uh, if we look at our interests and if we look at the regulation and all of the various laws and everything that impacts upon uh, what we want to do in Thailand, then we are uh, fine and we're pushing ahead. Now, the one thing that needs to be said is that when you're dealing in a, a country such as Thailand, you have to respect the Thai people, you have to respect the Thai administration, and you have to respect and understand that these are Thai resources and they're primarily uh, and quite rightly for the benefit of the Thai people. Uh, and if you lose that focus, then really uh, you're going to find it difficult to operate in Thailand. But if you have a very, very strongly uh, uh, focused Thai operation, which we do, uh, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, international firms engaging and doing business in Thailand. You see it all over the place. There are firms aplenty in all sorts of industries doing well, contributing to the Thai economy, making some money for themselves in the process, and the opportunity is so great that you don't have to uh, steal and plunder. You just have to make a sensible return. And with the opportunity so great, that return is very material and significant in the context of uh, your own company. So we're fine. We're moving ahead. Uh, we're obviously in, uh, as people can see from previous r and uh, quite late stage discussions. And I can't be any more specific than that. Well, I probably could be, but I shouldn't. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and just watch what happens with this particular set of interests. Don't forget as well in Thailand, what we're also doing is building quite a dramatic database of uh, information on projects. We're securing uh, applications, license applications over areas that are prospective, that we identify uh, are of interest. And we're building one of the biggest uh, focused Thai operations that there is in the resources space. And no, well, very few others are really focused. Nobody is focused in the same way we are. And if we're right that this is, an, this is a country where you can do business, and this is a country that will begin to uh, open up and further increase the uh, engagement with foreign direct investment, then this is a huge positive for Metal Tiger and for all of our team in Thailand. We're, we're convinced, we're focused, we're there all the time doing business, meeting people, and we're making tremendous progress. In previous, in previous Q&A sessions, uh, Paul, you spoke about having an exit strategy in, yeah. play, in place for all shareholders to have their value realised in their investment. Are you able to elaborate on that comment by stating any details of such exit strategy? Well, we've got to dispose of something first, haven't we? Uh, and, and it's got to be for a, a decent amount of money uh, because that, that's the whole point with this business. The first thing we have to do is we have a historic profit and loss account deficit. Uh, and under uh, UK company law, you have to extinguish, you have to eliminate that. Now, with the, uh, with the gains that we are making, particularly of late with the asset trading division, there is a great potential for us to extinguish uh, our historic uh, loss situation quite quickly. And once you've done that, that means you can then distribute. Now, looking at some of the interest that we've got, and everyone's focus is on Botswana, uh, this is the type of asset that could attract interest uh, from a variety of sources and has already. Now, if that interest then crystallizes into some uh, an offer for that particular part of our business or any other part of the business, and it's substantial, then we would automatically look to distribute some of that windfall to our shareholders. Uh, and that distribution doesn't mean we stop as a business. We can carry on. Uh, with a proportion potentially retained and then can carry on building through the cycle. But <clears throat> we are absolutely convinced that we have to distribute to generate the value that investors need uh, to see from the company. There is no point running through this entire cycle from bottom 
to top, then back down to the bottom again without getting value out and giving it back to the people that have supported us. Of course, you've got to be a shareholder at the, the point of crystallization of value. And that's the key thing. And that, of course, when we start to distribute at some point in the future, then uh, it will only be to shareholders on the register. Mm. This is, uh, like you said, these are not scripted. And obviously, you're doing all these questions, what you're going to be asked. Uh, this is the final one. OK. Before we get on to other business. It says, all the news, optimism, and, and subtle tipping seems to involve all the companies MTR have stakes in are not MT itself. Do you think this has a detrimental impact on Metal Tiger share price and confidence as people have sold out and put their money into these much talked about companies? Ah, okay, so has there been some transition across? I think that's a really good point because I would, I would suggest there probably has been. I don't think it's as big an effect as you might suspect, but let's just say that that's probably the case. Yeah. So have we taken a risk by doing these investments? Well, we, we had a choice. We, 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 we've always carried a certain amount of cash at bank, but the recent warrant conversions and the placing <coughs> at four, uh, that we did recently at uh, four and a half P uh, provided us with a significant uh, war chest. The markets are horribly depressed still in many resource shares. We've been able to put money into uh, about half a dozen uh, companies, uh, most of which people will see through the RNS we've released. Uh, that, uh, for the most part, has uh, been fantastic from a value creation perspective. You only have to look at the uh, Great and Gold scenario to see that our £150,000. Uh, that we invested is now worth, uh, with warrant profits, uh, four times our original uh, investment outlay. Uh, so what we've done is taken uh, money that would have been in the bank account, would have been earning precious little return. We've put it into resource companies at the bottom of the market, or so we think. We've generated significant returns uh, already from, that, that, from the uh, investments that we've made. We've dramatically increased our working capital in the process. And it really, really helps us, if we continue to do that kind of thing, to be independent from a financing perspective. Now, I've had experience of this before. If you start taking positions at the bottom of the market, <coughs> as I was doing back in 2008, eight, nine, the returns that you can make are quite staggering. And if we make a, a smidgen <coughs> of the returns that I made back uh, in 2008, 9, 10, 11, in the next uh, one or two years, then uh, we'll make a dramatic return and we'll have a dramatic amount of working capital. In essence, what I'm saying is I think it was worth the risk. <coughs> now, people may argue and want us to entirely focus everyone's attention on Metal Tiger. But this is a market. Sometimes people are engaged and sometimes they're not. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing in the background. <coughs> but what's absolutely important is that we build our working capital quickly and efficiently to make us safe and secure so people are not paranoid about placings because that's the last place we want them to be. We always do very sensible placings anyway. But if yeah. we can publicly and vociferously build the value of our working capital, then uh, people will start to calm down and start to focus on the project a little bit more and not worry about the financing risk. So in answer to your question, yes, I think there has been a small effect of people transitioning out. Uh, but I don't think it's that material. But I think the benefits of doing what we've done are dramatically positive. Well, the last time I looked, the uh, the Willy Wonka golden tickets. I might not be figure. I might not be figures wrong. People probably won't know what that means unless they listen to our podcast. But I think you guys. I'm not sure you. You maybe had a million in, but I think you were up to three million on them. Well, in terms of working capital. Yeah, it was a substantial. Uh, no, we we're, were around the four and a half level. Uh, and yeah, and, and we're, we're one of the probably one of the, the best funded uh, vehicles on the market. And I want that to increase. And I want it to increase using our heads, uh, not, not just reliant on discounted city funds. I want us to make our own money. Exactly. We've always said that. And we're doing it at the moment. Uh, and we want us to make a lot, lot more. So the stuff we're investing in, like your Greatland Gold, 
your Goldstone Resources, Red Rock Resources, Connemara Mining, Conroy Gold and Natural Resources, all this stuff we think has the potential to go up dramatically, which is why we're putting the company money into it. Well, I, I must admit, it's just my opinion. There's a few companies now watching you guys, the way you've raised funds through warrants, and it's been very sticky. So I, I think there's a lot to be learned there in the future when you look around the markets and you the way, obviously, I know you can't uh, give an opinion, but the way other companies have done it, it's they've just killed the share price. It's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, they have. Uh, but, of course, you can get rogered on a regular basis in the market by going and raising discounted money. Uh, but it's not what we'll do. And I assume that's why there's so many commentators or certain commentators who are bashing us on a regular basis because we don't go down their routes of heavily discounted placings, usually accompanied, uh, in, well, uh, often accompanied by some rather dubious market practices in the background. So we won't do that. We're, uh, we're focused on looking after our investors. And, and driving the value of the business forward. Botswana is significant, uh, the Thai work is significant, Spain has now come uh, really alive with its uh, significant tungsten opportunity and now gold properly within the portfolio. Uh, and we've got a variety of other things as well. It's all going great guns and blimey, <coughs> if I look at the screen now, mid price metal tiger 3.55 falling <coughs> for, for, for a while. <coughs> uh, over the last uh, few weeks or so, you think we were in a dire crisis. Well, folks, we're not. Quite the opposite. And uh, and if, if it takes another run of a dozen RNSs before people realise we're strong and pushing forward, then so be it. We'll release the RNSs and we'll uh, and we'll make people realise that this is just growing and getting stronger uh, by the week. Well, to be honest, well, obviously we, we, we're friends and I've, I've followed the company for quite a long time. And uh, I've seen the transformation from back in the day, when it, you know, you and Cameron and all that, when you were below a penny. But uh, just before we move on, I've, I've got to thank Adrian, uh, ShareTrader7 on Twitter. He got them questions together for us from the box. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Yes. Uh, there's a couple, a couple of crackers in there because it hits right at the heart of what we're thinking at, uh, about as a business. We are, <laughs> there's, uh, we, we've got to uh, reset people's, focus on the project. Uh, <clears throat> the projects are starting to grow into very, very significant uh, commercial opportunities. And we've really got to get people enthused and focused on, on, on them again. Uh, <clears throat> the slight slowdown of news flow from MOD and this, the stagnation and fall of their share prices kind of hurt us really. And uh, we, we now need to, to let people know that first of all, Botswana is absolutely fine and moving forward, and then that the rest of the business is moving forward just as much, if not faster. <clears throat> and people, if, if they hold on and they let us go through this process and build this business, I hope that they will be hugely pleased at the, uh, at the valuation at the end. Well, that's, 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 I wanted to pick up on the SPN uh, corporate update today, the expansion yes. of your interest. Last time I was in London, I met uh, I met Cameron Parry and Alex. Uh, yes. I can't pronounce his second name actually. Mika Mikolov, Alexander Mikolov. Oh yes, yeah, yes, our joint venture partner in Spain. You interviewed them as well. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we were talk we were talking about the tungsten grade there and everything. And I'm I'm just looking at your RNS today, and I can't see anything wrong with that. It's all positive. No, it's absolutely fine. I mean, the the market movements, which is what you're referring to, are just yeah. how the market works. It pulls and pulls back after a big run. <clears throat> it does tend to pull back and pull back and pull back. Certain kind of death by a thousand cuts. <clears throat> and the uh, the the problem is people become disillusioned. They lose the the focus. They begin, you know, they see other opportunities moving up, and they sell the shares. And the market restores its position. Uh, with people's uh, justifiable in some cases, but uh, understandable at least, uh, impatience with the situation, gets the stock back in, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, these share prices suddenly move up again, and, they, and you back off, uh, off and running. So <clears throat> as long as we keep the flow out to market and we, we, we increase our discipline with the likes of Botswana news flow, and we increase the, uh, the flow of news generally across the business because it isn't going to slow down, it's going to increase, then we, we should be fine. Spain is a cracking case in point. The tungsten data from 15 was fabulous. The uh, information that we've got about the, the 
potential opportunity there is superb. We need to do some deeper holes and we need to get some information as to how far down the tungsten goes, but it's near surface, so it's a great starter for 10. Uh, the gold opportunities, we had a good look at the, uh, the due diligence drilling. <clears throat> you know, people are not going to uh, jump up and down in, the, in difficult market conditions unless you uh, announce that you've drilled below the surface and found a gold mine staffed by Umpa Lumpers making, you know, 100,000 <laughs> ounces a year at 100 quid an ounce. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. But this is a good project with good potential art. CP has been all over it. Uh, you know, internally within the company, we've been all over it. It's a great opportunity. It adds to our Spanish business, and it makes Spain uh, a standalone significant opportunity for us. But it's only one of the things within our portfolio, of course. <laughs> You've also had your other RNS to date, uh, your general meeting updates. I see everything was passed from your uh, shareholders. Oh, yes. No, we're grateful. We're grateful for that because <clears throat> what that enables us to do, it gives us a small amount of additional uh, firepower for us to do uh, certain commercial deals, shall we say, if we wish to do them, uh, in terms of uh, using equity uh, rather than cash as, as part, of a, part of a deal. And, and also that includes deferred equity, not necessarily equity awarded today. If there's a deal that has equity down the line, uh, then you actually have to have the capacity now uh, to issue it, even though you might not uh, issue it in the next, say, uh, in the next X number of months. It might be much further down the line. You still need to have the, uh, the capacity in place. So we've got more flexibility. We might not actually use it, uh, but we, we may well do. We certainly don't need to do uh, the, uh, you know, discounted placings just in case any complete numpty mentions that on the discussion board. That's not <laughs> what we do. Uh, but and the equity isn't for that purpose as per the resolutions at the, uh, the general meeting. But the second element was to enable us to award uh, the options to uh, staff members, uh, uh, directors included as well, but directors, staff, management options uh, and key partner options uh, that we uh, announced to market a few months ago. We brought that forward just in case we wanted to protect ourselves yeah. against yeah. any uh, anything that might have happened, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, in the period between now and the AGM, uh, because we are potentially at risk. The size and nature of Botswana makes you a target. The, uh, the work that we're doing across the portfolio uh, makes us a target. And we wanted to lock those options down quickly and make sure that if we did get uh, a takeover offer for the business, then those options would crystallize immediately for people rather than them having to serve full year's notice. Uh, and we're going to wrap the options in the tax efficient package as well, which is all part of the GM. So thank you to everyone who supported that. Uh, I believe it went, through, you know, it, 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 it obviously people, it's gone through people's minds what our strategy and what our uh, rationale is, but I can assure people it was just a straightforward commercial decision making process. We just had to do this. We had to give ourselves the firepower. We had to protect the interests of, uh, of the people who are key to the business with the options, and we're grateful shareholders backed it. Just, just, just to uh, finish off on that one, you've got a show coming up, uh, I think it's the 20th in uh, June? Yes, we've, we, 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 uh, we've got the, uh, on the 21st of June, it's uh, more focused on Greatland and uh, on Red Rock Resources, but we're also participating to a degree as well. Uh, <laughs> So and the and the metal tiger people will be there. So uh, you know, if if people want to come and meet the directors, then the twenty first of June uh, is available to that. We will. Uh, we've got a few different things happening actually uh, in the foreseeable future. So we, for example, we uh, we are going to bring as we brought the the Botswana team to London. We are going to bring the Thai team to London very soon. Uh, and, uh, so we'll have we'll have the, the the chaps from Thailand coming over to the UK, uh, so people can actually see the people who are involved with our Thailand uh, uh, investing activities. That's I was just that was leading me on to uh, the Gretland Golds uh, GGP. Yeah, you appointed a, a new director on the twenty seventh of May. Yes, Jervis Headley. Yeah, Gervais. Yeah. 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 
And then you, you did uh, the director share purchase as well. Yes. I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm trying to push you here because I want an interview with uh, you and Gervais. That's what I'm asking with JGP. <laughs> Will you lighten up here? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I can't. I'm a bit stuck on Greatland because people know, of course, what, you know, what's happening with regard to Bromus now. So I can be a little yeah. bit more relaxed uh, from that perspective. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, that enabled us then to, to obviously make the, uh, the appointment of Gervais and, and uh, he got himself a bit of stock in the market and I... Uh, topped up to use the market phrase yeah. uh, we, we've got to move on with various things within the business we're obviously we have an ongoing review uh, where we we want to build Greatland in a very very rapid way with some superb assets and actually within the mix uh, Bromus in particular people need to have a look at Bromus on the greatlandgold.com website that's a very interesting project look at the soils and look at the uh, work that's been done uh, and it's all outlined there and I shouldn't really say too much but we've got four uh, four targets there uh, four drill holes to be drilled it's going to be interesting and it's and it's coming you know coming up as we've said within the RNS uh, but there's other things as well within the portfolio and externally that may well come into uh, into Greatland if we can build it very very rapidly and uh, with good quality assets then uh, that should start to be valued fairly chunkily in the markets and that's what we want because we've all got share positions the whole board have taken uh, uh, the board of four as was I should yeah. say a significant proportion of their uh, uh, of their first year's uh, earnings in, in stock significant proportion can't remember the exact amount but it's the majority uh, and that means that we're aligned with shareholders. We have options uh, in that company. We've got personal shareholdings. I've got about 85 million shares, we, along with my wife, who is constantly questioning, of course, what's happening now. To make, <laughs> and, 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 of course, I can't tell her because <laughs> uh, don't want to give too much away. And uh, it's... She's it, a nice you know, lady I've met her. She's a nice lady. <laughs> Yeah, but when it comes to money... I've got to say I, that, you know what I mean? Because she listens to this, she'll, she'll tell us off. <laughs> likely, yeah. yeah exactly, <laughs> women. So she, has, she is actually watching all the interviews and listening to all the interviews at the moment, so I probably shouldn't apologise now. But Greatland is a great, uh, great opportunity for us to build from the bottom of the market a really nice resource company, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, like like uh, Jabez, he'll be popping over as well to London on the 21st, I would imagine. Uh, Gervais is coming over on the 21st, yeah. So he'll be here uh, around as well for people to uh, see, chat to, and, and so on. All right, I've been uh, that'd be nice if I could get you to on the well. podcast. Um, you've got Callum there as well. You'll have Andrew Bell there as well. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Alex Borelli will be there. You've got the whole team. Oh, that's great. For uh, Mind Maven, yeah? Mind it's a Mind Maven, Maven event, yeah. Yeah, for uh, Malcolm, yeah, great. Paul, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today. It's much it's a pleasure answering uh, shareholders' questions as well. That's uh, that's really good, like it is. No, it's 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 a pleasure, and for the for the people who are, you know, concerned about market movements and so on, I give you my word that we are entirely focused on building Metal Tiger, and it's not going to stop. Okay, great stuff. Thanks very much. Okay, bye bye.